rope and uh that's of all of the things the one that you've sort of latched onto and yeah became an expert in and, and certainly one of the most you know what one of the top guys in the world when it comes to the rope you have way of the rope which is the company that you have in the uk selling ropes and um mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and instructionals and teaching and, and sort of pioneering different techniques. Yeah. So what was it in the rope that you went, of all of the stuff that he was putting out there, that you went, this is the <laughs> one for me? So when I first saw Weck on Instagram before I went out there, I didn't really connect with the rope. And I think that's how a lot of people, I saw the propulsors mm. and I could see, oh, they're talking about teaching you how to run differently that's better for biomechanics and stuff. And I just wanted to go and learn the propulsors, but the, there's kind of three um factors to work method and that's the propulsors um the rope and then the coiling core and when i got there and they actually taught us started teaching it was a three-day course to be work method qualified and it was chris chamberlain savage um teaching the rope and basically you you have a handle in each hand and it's kind of like a skipping rope except that it's a thicker heavier rope um and you have a handle in each hand and you swing it and you never jump the rope mm. and the difference when when you jump over a rope is your hands come down as your feet come up so the body's just hovering in space you're just floating in space but you're not that's not an athletic endeavor it will, it's good for cardio and it's good for training your calves and your spring mm. but if you see a tiger jump it doesn't just squash its lower half and its other half together whereas when you roll the rope and you swing the rope and you can feel the weight of it as the rope rises, your hands come up and you extend your legs. And as it come down, you kind of see there's this natural bob where the lower half of the body and the upper half of the body mm. learn to bounce together with the swing of the rope. And you see boxes, they'd skip, but then they also do these side to side. And that's essentially it. Yeah. They're on that, on that path then. And then so it, it trains the lower half and the upper body on upper half to over these hundreds of thousands of reps, which you can accumulate very fast, to move in sequence in in well time because it comes down to millimeters the difference between like top athletes and average athletes is just the sequence in which their body can work together and whether it's harmonized or, or more disharmonized now that's the up and down now the left and the right side because you've got a handle in your right hand and a handle in the left now some people say oh it's kind of like poi or some kind of rope dart or other thing and it is like it, it's got patterns of all these martial weapons because they all follow the same biomechanical principles there are going to be similarities in the way the wrists rotate and the mm-hmm. shoulder moves and stuff like that but what it does, because it's a rope, for one, it, it's, it allows um, for error in a sense that it allows, because it's slack, whereas if you were swinging a sword, it's just stiff. So, so it allow, because it's malleable like that, that's kind of forgiving in a sense. But at the same time, because it connects your left hand and your right hand, they are not only are they connected through the inside of your body, through your chest, down your arm, they're, they're now there's a circuit been completed down the outside of your body, whereas with a rope dot or a poi, this, this doesn't happen. Um, so your left and your right hand are talking to each other. So when you're rolling rope, you're doing dragon rolls or these different maneuvers, your left and right hand have to work in unison or sequentially uh, efficiently. Otherwise, the rope's going to smack you in the back of the leg or on the head or something like that. So if your left and right hand aren't perfectly timed, an error will happen and you'll get a a slight whip or something like that and, and you'll learn about it. And the body, without the mind having to think, will avoid that like naturally you just you put you know you do five or ten minutes a day and then you leave it till tomorrow you come back five or ten minutes and you just notice the you your body just learned Mm -hmm. you notice the same experience where you weren't overthinking it but you were just trying kind of rolling and the body naturally became more and more efficient over time and because um the left and right hand are are talking to each other that then you know the left hand connects to the right hemisphere the right hand connects to the left hemisphere of the brain so it does all sort of uh, mental mind things as well in terms of uh, putting you into your or taking you out of the logical brain. If you can be too left minded, you know, an intellectual, it can pull you pull you out of that. So there's so many different elements to what the rope does that I noticed. But it, it was just that the, because the fact that they're both connected and it completes this circuit between each hand. That was probably the most profound thing to experience. 